we live in a pretty incredible time. I mean, there's so many neat cars that come from the factories, whether it's in Detroit or out of Europe or Japan. And uh, many of these cars interest me personally from the standpoint that, you know, if the new Corvette comes out with 460 horsepower, then 650 or 700 horsepower would even be better. Almost all of our clients come to us for horsepower. That's, they want their car to go faster. They want to have a better sound. They want to have a more exciting uh, vehicle to drive. And uh, I know there's a lot of shops out there that do other things, but uh, all about the power and performance, that's something that, that inspires me and gets me excited. And, uh, and uh, that's the same thing with our clients. At any given time, we have about 60 cars in our shop. I'd say a third are Ford products, a third are uh, GM, Chevrolet, uh, Cadillac products, and a third are just a smattering of everything else. And then the Venom is something that's completely different than, than the 10 cars a week that we modify. the Venom is back in 2007 Road Track Magazine did a, uh, a cover story called Speed Kings and it was a shootout to see which supercar could go from 0 to 200 miles per hour in the shortest amount of time. Anyway so there's a variety of cars there's also Bugatti Veyron there 16.4 not the Super Sport and uh, at the end of the and we brought a twin turbo Viper our Venom 1000 Viper at the end of the event we were about four seconds faster to 200 miles per hour and we beat the Veyron in that particular competition. And uh, afterwards, uh, we thought, hey, this is great, but I thought, what's next? What can we do to go faster? And I thought, just adding horsepower isn't always, always the answer. What can we do to build a lighter car? So we joked about, well, what if we took like a Lotus Elise or an Exige, took out the little four-cylinder engine out of the back, and put that 1,000-plus horsepower twin turbo Viper engine in it, the V10. I passed the joke along to an artist. I said, look, why don't you sketch me up something? I want to see what that looks like. He gave me the sketches. I'm like, wow, I think, I think we could build that car. That's really cool. So not really having any game plan on how to market it or how to tell people about it. We, um, I was at the SEMA show, and I had some prints of the, of the renderings, and a guy from Jalopnik came up and stuck a camera in my face and says, hey, can I see what's new? And I pulled out my renderings and showed them to him, and they went on the internet a few days later. And So this is like seven years ago. And um, two weeks later, some guy from the Middle East calls me up and says, hey, I want to order a car. By the time we, a couple years later, when we delivered the car, he paid us a million for the car, but it cost us over three to develop it. So we, so we got into a situation where I'm like, you know, now we're fully committed, we have to sell more cars. And so, again, there was no real business plan to this, there was no marketing plan to it. It was just kind of a crazy idea that it turned into a reality. Once the car became a reality, then I'm like, you know, I want this car to be the fastest, not just to talk about being the fastest, but I want to have maximum horsepower, minimum weight. So the Venom has 1,244 horsepower, uh, weighs 1,244 kilos, so a little over 2,700 pounds. And um, we recently set the world's fastest record for uh, a road legal vehicle at 270.4 miles per hour. The idea all along was not just to build a cool car, a powerful car, but, but, to, but to show that the Venom is the fastest. From 0 to 60, it does that in under 3 seconds, but the car really shines from 60 to 200 plus because it just gets there so incredibly quick. 
you definitely have a power and attraction ratio uh, limitation. So, you know, uh, Veyron uh, Super Sport is, is going to beat the Venom, the 60, and it would probably be fairly close even to 100 miles per hour, but beyond 100, there's just no, there's just no competition from the standpoint that the Venom, the, tra the, the Venom has traction control. So the traction control does not stop working uh, at full power till about 140 miles per hour. And if you watch our 270 run, you can hear the, the car, you can hear the, the traction control just fighting to keep, the, keep the, the, the tires hooked up. And right when you pull into fourth gear and hit it into fourth gear, uh, you've got enough downforce uh, on the back of the tire to where you don't have any more traction control. At that point, you have full power. The Venom at 140 miles per hour is pulling 1.4 Gs of acceleration. The Veyron Super Sport from a standing start with all-wheel drive pulls 1.1 G of acceleration at five miles an hour. At 140, we're pulling 1.4 Gs. The guys at Bugatti, I mean, they've got the resources or I'm sure they'll come out with a car that's just as fast or faster at some point. So it's a, it's a good thing. We, I, I had a really nice chat with uh, Wolfgang Durheimer yesterday at the Quail and the, the, the chairman and president of Bugatti. And, uh, and we're, I guess we're kind of, a, we're, we're friendly competitors, but we're kind of kindred spirits that I told him, I said, uh, Wolfgang, we, we, we were only able to do what we did because you had set the bar so high. You know, and so it's kind of fun for us to be a little bit ahead of them and knowing that they're probably going to come back and, 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 and you know, raise the bar higher. So, you know, to, for the bar to go higher and for cars to go faster, you have to have the competitive rivalry. And the guys at McLaren, Ferrari, Porsche, they build some incredible cars, the P1, the 918, La Ferrari, but those manufacturers have said top speed doesn't matter to us. And that's okay. You know, they build great cars, you know, but, uh, for our brand and for the Bugatti guys, uh, there's something special about being able to say you're the fastest. So we'll take it as long as we can, uh, as we can hold that title.